A significant challenge of colostrum feeding is keeping it clean. In this film, part of Derico's calf management, we'll be looking at the importance of keeping colostrum clean and how to avoid contaminating it with bacteria. Feeding colostrum is essential to provide immunity for the calf until it develops its own. However, it is also the first way to potentially expose the calf to bacteria. Colostrum can too easily become a bacterial soup and end up doing your calves more harm than good. Bacteria in colostrum can reduce antibody absorption in newborn calves as well as causing scour. In this film, we're going to look at the possible sources of contamination of colostrum, the importance of effectively cleaning calf feeding equipment. We'll look briefly at the concept of biofilms, and lastly, we'll cover how to check whether your hygiene practices are up to scratch by measuring bacterial counts in the colostrum you feed to your calves. Colostrum can be contaminated at any point in the collection, storage, handling, and feeding process. Be aware that even a tiny amount of faeces contains a lot of bacteria and that bacteria multiplies rapidly in colostrum and on any residues on feeding equipment. Hygiene starts with the cow. The cow's teat and udder are a prime source for contamination. A pre-milking teat disinfectant should be used and each teat should be stripped out to remove any remaining teat sealant. Allowing the calf to suckle the cow directly increases the risk of contamination as the calf is more likely to ingest faeces from the cow's coat and udder. All the equipment used to collect colostrum should be clean. The cluster, the pipework and the dump bucket. Once collected, the colostrum should be taken from the dump bucket and placed in a clean bucket with a lid. The numbers of bacteria in colostrum start multiplying as soon as it's been collected roughly doubling every 20 minutes. Colostrum should either be fed as soon as possible, refrigerated, frozen or even pasteurised. We cover storage of colostrum in a separate film. Calf feeding equipment is another source of contamination. All equipment should be thoroughly cleaned, disinfected and sterilised before use. We will go on to cover this in the next part of the film. And don't forget, you yourself may be a source of contamination. Hands and clothes should be clean, and ideally, gloves should be worn when collecting, handling or feeding colostrum. When cleaning calf feeding equipment, such as bottles, buckets or stomach tubes, we advise following the rinse, soak, scrub, wash, rinse again, dry process. First of all, rinse with lukewarm water which is between 32 and 38 degrees centigrade. This is to remove any dirt or milk residues. Don't rinse with hot water. Hot water makes the milk proteins and fats stick to the surfaces, which will then just become a breeding ground for bacteria. We're aiming to remove all dirt and milk residue at this stage, as any remaining will decrease the bacterial killing power of the disinfectant chemicals we'll use in the next steps. The next step is to soak the equipment in water, which must be hot, between 54 and 57 degrees centigrade, and mixed with chlorinated alkaline detergent solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes. The chlorine detergent kills bacteria and also lifts the milk proteins away from the surfaces. Once the equipment has finished soaking, you should scrub any remaining residues from the equipment with a brush to loosen solids attached to feeding surfaces. Make sure you scrub all surfaces of the equipment. After you've finished scrubbing, you need to wash all the equipment to remove anything remaining of the residues that you've just scrubbed off. Fats melt at temperatures higher than 43 degrees centigrade, and so to ensure temperatures are high enough, wash water should be at least 49 degrees C at the end of washing up. This stops particles falling out of suspension and reattaching to surfaces as wash water cools. You shouldn't be able to place your bare hands in the hot water. I'd advise using long handled brushes and wearing gloves. Once you've washed off the equipment in hot water, you need to rinse again using an acid sanitizer, following the manufacturer's directions for correct concentration. Make sure to rinse the inside and outside of equipment. 
Sanitizer lowers the surface pH so it becomes acidic and means that any bacteria which does remain on the equipment will struggle to grow in the acidic conditions. You can store teats in a covered container of sanitizing solution until you need to use them. Lastly, we need to ensure that all equipment is properly dried. Equipment should be raised onto drying racks to allow proper drainage and drying. If equipment isn't dried properly, any pools of water or damp parts of the equipment will provide ideal places for bacteria to grow and multiply. In particular, don't stack damp buckets in a pile on the floor and make sure you hang stomach tubes vertically so that all the water can drain out. An important concept to bear in mind when cleaning equipment is that of biofilms. Biofilms are an invisible layer of proteins and fats that build up on surfaces that are not properly cleaned. Biofilms on feeding equipment act as a reservoir for bacteria. Once the biofilm has formed, further milk residues will stick to the biofilm and this creates an environment in which bacteria thrive. Once established, bacterial populations are very difficult to reduce because they produce substances to protect themselves. Biofilms are particularly likely to form if the initial rinse is too hot, allowing protein and fat particles to bond to the surfaces, brushing isn't thorough enough to remove all organic material, the washing water is too cool so particles stick back onto the surface again, Plastic is aged so that surfaces are cracked and rough, making it easier for particles to stick. Having followed all these steps, how will you know that the colostrum you're feeding your calves contains low level of bacterial contamination? After all, it's easy to see if you have gross contamination or dirty equipment, but we can't see bacterial levels. So it's important that you routinely test colostrum hygiene. Colostrum should be tested as fed to the calf. So take a sample once the colostrum or milk has been transferred into the feeding bucket, bottle or tube, just before it is fed to the calf. The milk samples should be submitted to your vet for testing for levels of coliforms. Coliforms are the most likely bacteria to contaminate colostrum. If your results come back with high coliform counts, you need to look at your colostrum hygiene practices for possible sources of contamination. So in summary, remember that ensuring that bacterial levels in colostrum are as low as possible is a crucial step in maximising the health benefits of feeding colostrum to your calves. You should try and optimise hygiene at every stage collection, handling, storage and finally feeding of colostrum to the calf. In particular, ensure that all equipment is properly cleaned using the six-step process covered earlier. Avoid biofilms and check how effective you are being by routinely testing for coliform counts in your as-fed colostrum. You can find more information about caring for newborn calves on the Dairy Co. Calf Management Fact Sheets or through the Dairy Co. website.